If it's broken, fix it. If you don't know how, learn. If you don't want to learn, shut up and accept it. If it can't be fixed, move on. You heard my voice. I was listening to my father's voice in my head. My father was an amazing man. Farmer, loved to be home, would not leave unless it was absolutely necessary. An amazing man, look up to him. During the trial, this man sat in that courtroom every day from the beginning to the end. His memory had started to wane a bit, but he was never sharper during that time. He would, at the end of the day, sit with me and help me analyze what went on. And this trial was the most amazing event I think a professional in dentistry can experience. It was March the 5th. I, I asked that you come with me into the courtroom. and I had sat through testimony from the prosecution, expert witnesses that dissected what I did and determined that it was probably not necessary or perhaps improper. And we had expert witnesses that did the opposite who had examined my treatment, my treatment plans, my care of those patients, and said, we see nothing wrong in this. The courtroom is set up so that there are large tables on either side, the prosecution on the right. And the indictment itself is intimidating because the front page of that has the United States of America versus me. And that's further stressed by the fact that in that courtroom and on this side with the prosecution is the lead prosecutor. They have two associate prosecutors. They have an AV person. They have support staff. And on my side was my attorney, me, and his associate. Listening to this testimony and throughout the process, I didn't have a voice, couldn't use my voice because in doing that I could either incriminate myself or I would be able to reveal something that the prosecution could use to build the case so that it would come against those things I said. So I was truly silent. Everything had been done and it was my turn. They called me to the stand. I walked slowly to the stand, swore an oath, and sat down. My lawyer had the first attempt, and I'm not going to stay up here because I've been in confined spaces way too long. <laughs> One of the issues was the treatment that I had provided was in question, whether or not it was necessary. And it was a Medicaid issue, so it wasn't like, it, it wasn't a crown, it wasn't a root canal, it wasn't anything major, it was simple restorative. Their expert had said that treatment was not necessary by what I was able to examine and to determine from that information she was given. My expert said that it was reasonable and justified. So my attorney had asked, Dr. Shelburne, what do you do to determine the necessity of treatment? And I went through the litany. I was very thorough about what I did. Questions continued, and 
my attorney finished and it was time for the prosecution. Knowing that this was not going to be pretty, I prepared myself as best I could. And when it came time for him to address this particular case, he said, Dr. Shelburne, you did an amazing job of explaining what you do to determine treatment for this patient. Nodded to the AV person. That AV person flashed a copy of my dental record in front of me. I could see it. And in front of the jury, which was on the other side, they could see it. And of course, the jury has no clue what any of that means to any great extent. Why should they? But in the courtroom, the drama is amazing. It's not on the facts, or has very little to do with the facts, has more to do with theater. And the prosecutor was very good at what he did. So the question was, following his compliment about my description, the question was posed to me, Show me in your treatment record where you provided any of those assessments to determine that treatment was necessary. I looked, and I said, there's none there. The prosecutor nodded. He turned a bit toward the jury, and his statement was, well, I guess now that you're on trial for it, we'll just have to take your word for it, won't we? That was tough. At that point, it was not going well. In the time it took from the initiation of the suit till that time, I had an opportunity to be able to assess myself. I was lacking my records. My records did not protect and defend, and there are ways of doing that. I learned a very tough lesson from that. It was broken. I didn't fix it. What I didn't share with you, after I was found guilty and went to prison, my father continued to visit me. One day he left and hugged me as we generally do and he whispered in my ear, he said, son, you know I'd do anything in the world for you. I'm sorry, I can't fix this. He left and went home. I didn't know he would die 10 days later. They're, they do allow inmates to go to funerals. That had never happened while I was there. I made the request, and they allowed it. I went home to my father's funeral, knowing that I didn't have the opportunity to say goodbye. But I'm so thankful to hear that voice in my head when he says things like, if it's broke, son, fix it. If you don't know how, learn. If you don't want to learn, shut up and deal with it. If it can't be fixed, accept it. I was not able to hear and to understand. My hope and my desire for you today is to hear and to understand you have a choice now. You can change what you do. You can protect and defend. Those records can testify for you when you can't. You have that opportunity. I don't. Choose well. Thank you.